Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the most disliked handling characteristic of them all, understeer. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the definition of understeer, or push as you may call it in the US. Understeer is when the front tyres break traction before the rear tyres. So you can imagine, you go to turn the car into the corner and we are front limited. The front tyres are sliding across the circuit while the rear tyres are remaining in full grip. As a driver, you may be entering the corner and the car won't follow the path that you actually want it to, but it will push wider than your intended um, steering input. So if you look at this diagram here, the orange line shows the intended path that the driver wants to take with his steering input, and the green line shows the understeer line, where the driver is turned in, the front tires have slid across the, the track surface, and we've actually pushed wide out of the corner. In this second diagram, you can see what the actual, the, the racing line looks like when you have understeer. Again, the orange line is the intended, the ideal racing line, for this corner and the green line is what happens when the car understeers. So the driver will come down into the bend, apply the brakes as normal and when they go to turn the car into the corner the front tyres will actually skip across the surface, uh, slide across the surface and the car won't turn as much as the driver wants. So as you can see here on the green line we, we miss the apex, we get back on the throttle anyway and we actually push wide coming out of the corner. So you may be wondering how understeer actually feels when you're driving on the track. Well, the first thing to say is that understeer is actually quite predictable and a quite a safe thing to happen when you're driving on a circuit. In fact, road cars or, or track day cars that are road cars are actually set up to understeer as it's much safer for a car to understeer than it is to oversteer, which is when the car slides at the rear. So, the way you can feel understeer is mostly through the steering wheel. As you turn the car into the corner, when the front begins to slide, you'll feel that the, the steering goes quite light as you, you turn too much. So imagine turning the car into the corner, you're right on the edge of grip for the front tyres, you try and turn a little bit more into the apex and at this point the steering wheel will, will go a little bit light. Now, one common mistake from amateur drivers and track day drivers is that because we may be missing the apex at this point where we begin to get a little bit of understeer, they just apply more and more steering lock. Well, the grip of the tyres is already being used up at 100%, so it doesn't matter how much more steering lock you apply, the car won't turn anymore. And in fact, if you just put more and more steering angle into the car, it's actually quite dangerous for when the tyres grip again. Because you imagine you turn the car into the corner, we get that bit of understeer, the driver continues to put the steering angle in, and then as we're coming out, the tyres grip up, but the wheels are actually having too much steering angle in them for the direction that you want to go. So they may grip up and turn you towards the inside of the circuit, which obviously isn't what we want. Another way that you can actually feel the understeer a little bit more, and a common mistake, again, that I see with amateur drivers, is that because they feel like they're going very quick, on the circuit, they, they're holding the steering wheel really, really hard, and this takes out some of the sensitivity that you have through the steering wheel. So whenever you're driving on the track, have a nice relaxed grip on the steering wheel, and this will make any, any movement, whether at the front or the rear, much easier to feel through the steering wheel. So there are a few common causes of understeer when you're driving on track. As we spoke about in last week's tutorial, if you brake too hard going into the corner and actually begin to lock up or under-rotate the front tyres and then try to turn into the corner, you'll get some understeer. This is because the tyres are already under-rotating, they're already at the edge of their grip and if you try and turn into the corner then there's no grip available to actually turn the car rather than just decelerate the car. The second issue can be if you try and just carry too much speed into the corner. Now it depends on the driving technique and it also depends on the setup of the car as to whether the car will understeer or oversteer but it's definitely possible that if you try and carry too much speed into a corner the car physically can't go around the corner that quickly and one of the ends will break away and it could be understeer where you'll 
just bring the car into the corner and we'll just slightly push away from the apex. The third cause can be when you're accelerating through and out of a corner. So you imagine you're coming in towards the apex, you begin to pick up the throttle again. And as we spoke about in the weight transfer article, at this point when you get back on the throttle, when you re-engage the engine, the rear of the car will squat down. We transfer a lot of the grip and the weight towards the back of the car and the front becomes light. When the front becomes light, it loses quite a lot of grip. And so this is, it's at this point when, when you may understeer. So the car sits down at the rear, you're on the throttle, it's sitting down, we're pushing out and the car goes more towards the outside of the circuit than we'd actually like. And finally, if you have a poor, poorly set up car, it can cause understeer at any point in the corner. Now we're gonna go into this in a little while in this tutorial and in more detail in later tutorials. But if you have a poorly set up car, there may be no way around actually getting rid of the understeer while you're just driving on the circuit. So now we're going to take a quick look at how you can change your driving style to help correct understeer while you're driving in a session on track. We've split this section up into, into three parts. Firstly, we're going to take a look at how to correct understeer at turn-in. Then we're going to take a look at how to correct understeer at the apex. And finally, how to correct understeer at the exit of a corner. So firstly, um, when you're turning in, it's very important to have a smooth style as you're coming into the corner. Now this all comes from good vision, making sure that you're looking at the apex as you're entering the corner, and hopefully you've watched our tutorial on vision. So if you're coming into the corner and you turn the car in really hard, you're gonna shock those front tires and you're, going, you're just gonna make them slide across the track surface. So as you're looking at the apex, you're going to be wanting to turn the car in very gently, transfer that weight to the outside of the car, nice and smoothly, and that way you'll maximize the speed that you can take in towards the apex. The second um, thing that you can do is to not lock up the front tires as you're braking into the corner. Now, obviously we've gone over this briefly uh, in this previous section, but if you're locking up already and all the tires grip is being, being used for deceleration, then it's impossible to turn into the corner and you'll just lock up and go straight on. So as you're beginning to turn the car into the corner, just to ease up on the brakes a little bit so that you can uh, release some of that grip and make it available for turning into the corner. However, you can brake too little coming into a corner. So as we mentioned in the last weight transfer tutorial, when you come into a corner, the nose of the car will dive and we give the front of the car a bit more grip than the rear. So you imagine that you're coming into the corner and you have understeer at turning. Well, actually what you can do, you can change your technique so that you keep the brakes on a little bit longer. So the nose of the car is down a little bit longer. We have more weight and more grip over the front of the car. So then when you turn in, we have that little bit more grip and the car will be more well balanced. So now let's take a look at how we can correct understeer as we're coming in towards the apex of a corner. First of all, again, let's think about what the car's doing as we're coming in, into the apex. We're coming along, we're on the brakes, the nose dives and the rear comes up. We come off the brakes, we turn the car into the corner. Now, just at the apex, we'll be re-engaging the accelerator, just a tiny amount, and the rear of the car will just sit down a bit. Now, in a long corner, such as the one in this diagram here, the rear of the car will sit down and it may be that the front of the car becomes light and you pick up a bit of understeer. Now, in a longer corner like this, you actually have time to lift off the accelerator. And what this does is it transfers some of the grip to the front of the car because the front of the car will dive down. At this point, which will probably be around here, the car will turn because you've given the front a lot more grip and this will help you get a better exit coming out of the corner and reduce some of the understeer. Now it may be that you can't get rid of the understeer completely and that you'll have to make a setup change which we're going to go through in a little while. The second thing that you can do which we just mentioned in this previous section is also to keep the brakes on or trail brake into the corner a little bit further. So we're on the brakes, we get the nose to stay down 
And even though we come off the brakes, we just keep slight pressure on the brakes for a little bit longer into the apex so we give the front some more grip as we're coming into the apex and we could actually cause the car to rotate, which is where the, the rear of the car oversteers slightly as you're coming towards the apex. So again, you get the car to turn as you're coming into the apex and then accelerate out and hopefully you won't pick up too much understeer at the exit. Talking of the exit, um, it's very, very difficult with driving technique to remove any kind of understeer from the apex to the exit of the corner. If you imagine bringing the car into the apex, again, we're getting back on the accelerator and opening the steering angle. Now, in terms of technique, there isn't really anything that you can do towards the exit of the corner. We don't want to lift to transfer the weight to the front of the car at this point because we'll just destroy the speed going down the next straight. So the best advice in terms of driving technique is to make sure that you don't understeer too much and just be patient with that accelerator. If we're coming out here on the green line, for example, and we realize that we're running out of road and we have a lift, then it's gonna completely destroy the lap time because any lift at the exit of the corner just costs you so much time. So what it's actually better to do is to just stay within the grip threshold of the understeer, be very patient with the accelerator, and just be nice and smooth as you're coming out of the corner. So I couldn't put a tutorial together about understeer without talking a little bit about setup, as you can remove a lot of these issues if you change the setup of your car. Now, we're gonna go into much, much more detail in later tutorials where we'll be covering everything there is to know about setup and how it affects the handling of your track car. The first thing for me to say here is that do not change the setup of your car unless you're very experienced. The whole process of conveying what's actually happening to the car at a specific point in the corner is very difficult to do. You then have to give that information to your engineer and then he has to translate that into a setup change. So if your feeling isn't particularly good um, in your car, if you're not completely consistent every lap, and we're talking within three tenths of a second per lap, and if you can't convey that to your engineer very well, then don't touch the setup of the car. One option could be to get a professional driver to come into your car to drive it for half a day or so. And if you get someone good, they can go and drive the car for three or four laps and actually give you some advice on what changes should be made. You then continue with this process a few times, maybe make three, four, five changes, and hopefully you'll be moving in the direction with the setup of your car. Now, in the article below, we have a table of the issues that you may have concerning understeer and what changes you may make um, with your car setup. So have a look in the article below just to give you a rough idea of which um, areas of the car you can change to get rid of some of the understeer at turn-in, apex and at the exit. So that's it for this whiteboard. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please share it with your social media and I'll see you next time.